After days of negotiations, Pakistan's two old guard political parties have agreed to form a government. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, PMLN, and Pakistan People's Party, PPP, have come to an agreement to establish a coalition government. Now, the announcement made by the party leaders in a joint news conference late in the night ends 10 days of intense negotiations after an inconclusive national election did not return a clear majority. Share with you that... I can share with you that the Pakistan People's Party and the Muslim League Nawaz have enough numbers now and God willing, now we will be able to work on forming a government. With the help of Allah, we are now in a position to form a government. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari declared that PMLN President Shehbaz Sharif is set to assume the role of Prime Minister, while Bilawal's Bilawal Bhutto's father and PPP's co-chairman Asif Ali Zardari will become the next president of the country. Shehbaz Sharif has expressed his gratitude towards the leadership of both the, both the parties to reach at a consensus. He emphasized the unity between the two parties and their ability to form a government. This coalition agreement comes after politicians loyal to jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan and the Sunni Etihad Council, the SIC, failed to secure a simple majority in the elections. Now, in this month's election, Candidates backed by Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek and Saf party won the most seats, while on the other hand, PMLN secured 75 seats and PPP came in third with 54. Mutaida Qaumi Movement Pakistan has supported the coalition between PMLN and PPP with their 17 seats. This coalition aims to navigate the challenges ahead of them collectively. Our Muslim League Nawaz ke. All right, for more on this, we are now being joined by Imtiaz Gul, who's a senior journalist from Islamabad. Welcome to uh, Vion. I wanted to get to it directly, sir. Given how long it has taken with six rounds of talks, how stable do you feel this coalition between PPP and PMLN will be? Well, I think the fears have been that uh, this is not going to be a stable government at all. Mm with a lot of problems uh, uh, facing Pakistan, particularly the economy is in dire straits, financial health of the country is not good. So that's why uh, the People's Party was uh, reluctant in uh, becoming part of the government. Uh, so was the Pakistan Muslim League, but because the Pakistan Muslim League uh, had a lot of stakes, mm. there were a lot of apparently understandings between the military establishment and the Pakistan Muslim League. And that's why I think the pressure eventually worked that uh, somehow uh, there has to be a coalition government, the two parties have to mm. form a government to steer the country out of this political and economic crisis. And that's why this reluctance on the, on, on the one hand uh, by the People's Party and the insistence on uh, several posts, constitutional posts that the party wanted. Uh, like, you know, this is... Uh, for us, uh, uh, this is a, this is like a side talk, but uh, this is the fate of this country to be now ruled by two. Different. One is the Bhutto Zardari, and then the other one is the Sharif. The mm. People's Party had insisting on a president, on you know, the presidential slot. Mm. After March, that president presidential candidate would be again Asif Ali Zardari. Mm. Uh, so this most probably the sticking point why it took so long. Mr. Gul, I also wanted to just come back to the two things that you mentioned, that there was pressure to form a coalition and there was also a certain reluctance to form a coalition. Now, on Monday, the SIC wrote to the Election Commission of Pakistan to indicate that 50 PTI-backed independents had joined their party. On Tuesday, the sixth round of talks happened between PPP and PMLN and finally they came to a conclusion. Till then, that conclusion had not, they had not arrived at any kind of a common understanding. I just wanted to understand from you, do you feel the PTI independence and SIC cozying up together caused them to quickly arrive at a co coalition arrangement? I mean, this was one pushing factor. Mm. It's not just the Sunni Council, it's also Majlis e Wadatul Muslimin. Mm. So what the PTI was uh, uh, co opt two parties, one representing the Sunnis and the other one representing the, the Shias of the of the country. Mm. So that way was a master stroke by the PTI, mm. co-opting all parties that are on the fringe, but they represent wide 
swaths of the population mm. and in a way demonstrating the inclusive inclusiveness and the cohesion of the, of the party that it represents all shades of uh, people now uh, obviously there are still a lot of cases stuck with the election tribunals uh, uh, the disputes arisen arise that had arisen out of uh, the the election results so we don't know what happens to that but as of now it seems that uh, the the uh, the question of government formation mm. has been resolved and mm. uh, that would mean that the pti which uh, which obviously stood on the top as mm. far as far as the number son shall have to contend with the with a role in, as a, as a as an opposition party in the national assembly and probably that is how things will move forward mm. how long can move forward to what extent mm. that remains to be seen mr gul now nawaz sharif returned he had a grand returning to pakistan he was pegged as the favorite when he started campaigning now shehbaz sharif has been announced as the next pakistan prime minister why shehbaz and why not nawaz now i just want to also add here nawaz sharif's daughter and political heir had said that this was because her father did not want to head a coalition government is it that simple or is there more here well i think uh, the nawaz sharif card did not play well mm. the party and its supporters had expected that it, it would uh, sweep the elections mm. whereas both the people's party and the pakistan muslim league failed mm. to reach the sentiment on ground the sentiment on ground was simply for imran khan mm. it had been necessarily just for imran khan but a discontent with the system mm. a discontent with the majority the stakeholder and probably this was an unprecedented election in which a party whose candidates were blocked from mm. all possible in all possible ways mm. they were not even out a corner meeting mm. so they were harassed they were being driven from one court to the other mm. without any campaigning this party uh, secured most of the seats or its back candidates yes so this was a big big snub mm. to the entire step which i think uh, people's party and the muslim league people had failed to read mm. and this is a big frustration also for nawaz sharif that he even lost on one one seat up in the north mm. so this had become clear mm. that this man uh, had outlived his uh, utility it won't be relevant to pakistani politics anymore as far as active politics is concerned mm. he was here primarily to promote his daughter mm. uh, maryam nawaz mm. and she has been made now the chief, chief minister or nominated as chief minister and this is the a uh, destiny or the fate of people mm. in in a country like pakistan that the sons and sons and daughters mm. of dynasties they end up as the president as the prime minister the mm. chief minister whereas other leaders end up as the cheerleaders of these parties and these people that was mr imtiaz gul senior journalist joining us from islamabad thank you so much for sharing all your insights with us sir welcome